are being provided to me. All my things are being provided to me. Everything is being given to me. Everything is coming to me. The food's here. The bed's here. The water is here. Everything's here. And then somebody comes and tells you, Oh, this palace, the king that it belongs to, he's going to bring it down. And you're like, No, no, no. Why? This, this palace can't come down. This palace isn't going to come down. And so this is, this is kind of like how uh, one of the great scholars, Sayyid Nusri Rahmatullah he describes kind of like the situation that we're in. So Allah subhanahu wa says, وَإِذَا السَّمَاءُ فُرِجَتْ وَإِذَا الْجِبَالُ نُصِفَتْ وَإِذَا الْجِبَالُ نُصِفَتْ And when the mountains are scattered, right? Those very things that you find totally stable, the most stable things on earth, they're like scattered all over. وَإِذَا الرَّسُولُ أُقِّدَتْ And when the messengers, they are brought to their appointed times, meaning uh, the, pro the prophets are brought forth in, in front of Allah to give witness that what was their response of the people because this is the issue that's being discussed. What did they respond to you when you came to them with our, with our message? One thing that has to be very clear over and over again is that when a messenger goes, no one is unclear. It's not like today, right? Everyone's confused anyway today. Because this is one of the signs of the Day of Judgment. Everyone's confused anyway, right? Even Muslims are confused. Even Muslim scholars are confused sometimes. I'm confused. So, I mean, even anybody is confused. But in those times, in a small city, when a messenger is going, he's showing his miracles, there's no one that's confused. Everybody knows this is the truth. And which rem reminds me of another very important topic of the 30th Juz. Maybe I won't be able to complete the surah as I wanted to, but this is very important. Not all kuffar are equal in the Qur'an. Like, take an example. Abu Talib, for example, was the uncle of the Prophet He was not a muhalif. He was not amongst the muhalifin. He wasn't. Uh, he didn't agree, meaning he didn't accept Islam. But Abu Talib helped the Prophet. He was a non-Muslim. He helped the Prophet. And even amongst non-Muslims, for example, in the surah that we just read, Surah Al-Qalam, is a different type of non-Muslim. Surah Al-Alaq will talk about a different type of non-Muslim. For example, in Surah Al-Qalam, in Surah Al-Qalam, Surah Al-Nun, it talks about. Uh, the okay, so you have Abu Lahab. Let me mention him. He was non-Muslim, but he was also bad of character. He was selfish. He was bakhil. He was selfish. He was a coward. He didn't want to, to stand up for what he believed in. He was a coward and he was selfish. And he was Abu Lahab. So he was the worst of the kuffar. But Abu Jahl, on the other end, if you remember the hadith of the Prophet sallallahu the Prophet prayed for two people to become Muslim. Amr ibn Hisham, who was known as Abu Jahl. He was Abu Jahl. He was Jahl in the sense of not his heart was heart, but he had good character. He was he was generous. He, he stood up for what he believed in. When he was in Badr and he was being killed, he even said to the kids that were going to kill him, he said, "Don't don't kill me now from the back. Kill me from the cut me from the front. So when people see my head, you know, it's standing with honor." He had himself on the head. He was brave. He was generous. He had his, he had dignity, but he was a kafir. And he was a full-time opponent of the Prophet In the same way you have Walid bin Mughira, who's mentioned in Surah Al-Qalam. Abu Jahl is mentioned in Surah Al-Alaq. Uh, but the point is, they're not all equal. And uh, Walid was one of those people that was going between the... You know how we have munafiks in the Muslims, right? Who are the munafik in the Muslims? He goes to the Muslims and says, you know, let's just, let's just have peace. We don't have to stand up for what we really believe in. He's trying to compromise, okay? The same way you have the munafiqeen amongst the kuffar. And the, one of the best examples of a munafiq amongst the kuffar was Walid bin Mughira. He listened to the Qur'an and he knew this is not human, this is not man-made. This is definitely far superior than, 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 than any, 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 any human being coming up with this. So he wanted to compromise, right? And, and there's many ahadiths on this issue. So he is mentioned in Surah Al-Qalam. Uh, oh, Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, they want you to come. This is referring to Walid bin Mughira. He was also very rich. He owned line, land in Mecca. He owned land in Ta'if. You know, when the Prophet... Uh, anyway, I won't go into the issue of Ta'if right now. But uh, the point is that not all non-Muslims are the same. Okay, even according to the Qur'an, Abu Jahl had a different role. Abu Lahab had a different role, uh, Walid bin Mughira had a different role, other people had a different role.
okay? So not everyone's responding the same way, and even those that are responding positively a little bit, like Mughira, are not necessarily responding for the right reasons, okay? So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, uh, For what day are they in a hurry? You know, or what day has been deferred for them? Then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, Liyawm al-Fasl. Now, Liyawm al-Fasl is the, is the connecting ayah between this surah and Surah Al-Naba. Because these are twin surahs. Surah Al-Mursalat and Surah Al-Naba are twin surahs. They, they complete together one topic. Again, I'll try to uh, go into that when it comes. Liyawm li, li, al-Ujjilat. Liyawm al-Fasl. Fasl means to sort out something decisive that sorts the right from the wrong. This way from that way, sorting out, filtering out. Liyawm al-Fasl. Al-Fasl also means to be extremely serious, opposite of Hazal, which means to joke around. وَمَا أَدْرَاكَ مَا يَوْمُ الْفَصْلِ And what will tell you what is that day of sorting, right? You're in this castle, you're enjoying it, and one day the construction is going to come down and you're not bothered by it. You're just lost in your own life, is one type of people. Another type of people, they've... They've convinced themselves that, oh, this castle, it's there by mistake, right? It's just there. And other people have convinced them of other things. But everyone's benefiting from the benefits of being in that castle. The food's coming, the water is coming, all your provisions are coming, your bed is there, your lighting is there, your electricity is there, and you have all these series of them. And you're not wondering who made this castle. Why is this castle here in the first place? So this is what Allah subhanahu wa is trying to poke at us and say, look, you need to think about this. Why are you here? Why are you even here? Allah says then, وَمَا أَدْرَاكَ مَا يَوْمُ الْفَصْلِ This style, وَمَا أَدْرَاكَ You can't even, even if you know you can't know. Even if you realize, because of course, we all know La ilaha illallah, for example, right? We all know La ilaha illallah, but who realizes La ilaha illallah? And the one who realizes La ilaha illallah doesn't even realize La ilaha illallah because it's such a significant thing. It's like, I know the North Pole exists, but I've never seen it. Well, maybe somebody who's been there realizes it, but there can be a, but then there's somebody who actually knows every single city in the North Pole, right? He knows every single city. He really knows the North Pole, right? So it's like the same way. What can, what can, what experience can you have? What can help you understand that this is serious business? This, this construction of this palace is coming down. It's coming down, it's coming down anytime and it's going to be faster than you think, right? So Allah says, وَيْلٌ لِلْمُكَذِّبِينَ Now this is the point, this is the main theme of the surah. Woe, destruction upon those who deny the truth. Destruction upon those who can't accept the truth. Why? Because truth is something that's part of what you can say your inner heart. It's part of what is a priori. If you can't accept the truth, then there's something wrong with your fitrah. Something wrong with your nature. It's something wrong with the way you are receiving, especially if it's made clear. One thing is somebody has a bias. One thing is somebody has a strong opinion. One thing is somebody has misinformation. I'm not talking about that. But if actually somebody is clear, yes, this is the truth, and he's still not accepting, then there is something that is becoming uh, corrupted within a person. And it seems from the ayat, when you read these ayat, these verses of the Qur'an, that by this time, by the time of this revelation, that everybody in Makkah, especially the elite, and the mala of the, the, the elite of Makkah, they were clear pretty much that this is the truth, but they're stuck, they don't want to accept it. You know, uh, for example, uh, I was talking about Abu Jahl, right? He, he had good character, and he was asked, why don't you accept Islam? He was, do you think, if somebody asked Abu Jahl, do you think Muhammad is lying? Sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, no, I don't think he's then why don't you accept his message? Well, you know, our tribe and his tribe, we've been in competition, and they were generous, and we were more generous, and they did this, and we did this, and we've been neck to neck with them this whole time. Now if I accept Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, as the messenger of Allah, I will have to, uh, you know, me and my tribe, we're gonna surrender to his tribe. So this was the, and he was upfront about it. So anyway, did we not destroy the people before? And then we followed them by other another group of people. So they got people get and if you read in history, just a very interesting thing to look up on Google. How many civilizations just die? Just die. 
We don't know why they died. The Mayan civilization, gone. Poof. We don't even know why. Civilizations come and then they're gone. So many civilizations. Anyway, uh, please come forward. This is how we deal, Allah says, we deal, this is how we deal with criminals. Because now they're a criminal. They're a criminal when they don't accept the truth. This is how I deal with the criminals. Did we not create you? Now this is that Allah is reminding you. Look what I made you from. Where are you? Right? The being in that castle is being reminded. So Allah says, please come forward, please come. Those are that at the back, just keep, uh, help the brothers come forward. <laughs> Did we not create you from like a fluid that you find uh, irritating or despicable? We created you from this thing, you don't think about it, right? And if we created you, then you're under our plan. This is the point. And then that 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 liquid goes and finds itself lodged in a secure place, right? For an appointed time, for a certain time you're there, and then what? And then we put our qudra there, we put our, our power in there, we put our we put the value of everything in that boom. And then ni'mal qadirun, and how beautiful we are in the creation that we make. But ni'mal qadirun, how powerful we are, how be how uh, beautifully powerful we are. You can say. <laughs> so woe upon the people that deny the truth. Uh, please come forward again. Uh, the people that are in the back, keep your eyes on the back because people are keep coming in. This is a very interesting ayah of the Qur'an. Did we not make the earth kifatha? Kifatha is a place that gathers things. So in other words, it's, it may be referring to, Allah knows, it may be referring to a lot of things, but one of the things that it's definitely hinting towards is the idea of gravity. Right? You're on earth and you're not falling out. The idea of kifatha is to gather things in one full embrace. So what is it that gathers us in one full embrace? One of those things is definitely gravity. Did we not make the earth a receptacle for you? Meaning a place where you're gathered in one full grace by the, you could say,